Right guys, my swordsmanship has been challenged. I don't mean I've been challenged to a swordsmanship duel. I mean the information I've been put out there or I've been putting out there has been challenged. So my name's Anthony Cummins and I have been spent about two or three years dedicated to translate, well, having a translator translate and me going through it and working it out. Um, the Yagyu Shinkagyu Eimoku Roku Scroll. Um, now, there's a guy called Nate the Aussie who's put up a video. I'm gonna his the video should be running over this now, and he has said basically that he doesn't believe I have got the translations correct, and that oh sorry he doesn't believe that I have interpreted the translations out there correct, and that his version is better, and that mine doesn't make any sense. So what I'm going to do for you today, guys, I'm going to take you through. I'm going to take you through exactly. Um, how I've got to our interpretation of it. Now, the first two major mistakes, or the main major mistake that Nate's made, is he thinks I'm working off of um, two books, The Sword and the Mind, and basically by Hirosaki, I think, if you remember, Hiroaki, sorry, um, and also from the William Scott Wilson translation of the Emokuroku Yagyu. Now, he's very wrong in this because, and he probably got this info, this idea because I did a video a long time ago about Yagyu and I at first started using the Hiroaki one um, because it was Japanese and I actually spoke to Mr. Hiroaki and who in Japan I, via email and he gave me permission to actually use his book and bring it out. But what Nate the Aussie doesn't know is that actually I drew in another translator from a sword and ship school. Now, I have Miyako Koizumi, who's one of my translators, who worked on this with me and also a secret translator but you guys know japanese culture they don't want to know they don't want to be out there because they're in the swordsmanship world so they don't want to be known and she doesn't really want to be known so basically but what i'm going to do so nobody out there can say well we don't believe you well first of all look at all the books we've translated we do have japanese translators but second um what i'm going to do is i'm only once, because this is going to become a book, I'm going to put the Japanese on screen for you. We have spent two years translating this, and I had to fly. You've all seen me go to Japan and different places all over the world and been to Spain and all that. I had to actually fly to meet the translator. I used the donations that you guys gave so that I could sit there with the translator and go through line by line this swordsmanship. And it's taken two years to go line by line to get there and then fly out and see them and go through it fully over a, like a, an extended weekend and double check everything. And we still only think we're about 90 or 85 percent, 90 percent correct. And it has taken not only the original manual, it has taken multiple other manuals. I ended up spending 400 pounds, euro, euros ish on the collected works of Yagyu Shinkage Ryu so that I could get this as close as I possibly could. So I'm going to take you through step by step the translation and show you where the problems lie. Now, the first thing we did, of course, is get it all typed out into Japanese. So you can see the actual uh, swordsmanship skill in question here is number one from the scroll, which is Ito Ryodan. OK, so that's the one in question. And I'm going to show you the translation we did for that. But step one was get them all written out, all the titles written out. Step two was actually get the original text typed out there. Now, this is not as difficult as it seems because you can find it uh, typed out online in Japanese. It's not a massive problem, but it then has to be checked to make sure it is correct. So you can see there we started, um, the translator started typing them all out, getting it all sorted, and then the English starts after that. The next big mistake that uh, people make is um, they don't realise that this text is divided into two. Please don't take these divides on screen as absolute. I literally just did it as an example. I will divide exactly where they are in the English. It would just take too long to find it in this scrawly kanji. Uh, but basically, what a lot of people miss about this, and it's not the only technique that does it in Yagyu, is the technique is described, let's say in the orange box, and then the purple bit later explains a part of the technique... That is how it's done. This puts loads of confusion because you think it's an extra technique at the end, but it's not. It's just an explanation of the technique or how to do the technique um, from the previous few sentences.
So, some of you who know Yagi, you might say, well, Anthony, there is a second cut at the end of this. We know it in the original form. There, can you see that second cut again? They come down. This is the Japanese officially doing it, by the way, and I'll show you what my interpretation is. The first cut, and then there's a second cut that follows up, right? However, that does not appear until much, much later. Basically, this second, what appears to be a second cut, does not appear in this manual. It is not there. This makes this discussion really complicated. Now, it's because Nate's picked this one, which is specifically hard because in nearly every Yagyu tradition, they do a follow-up cut like Nate does. I'm going to show you Nate's in a minute. But actually, it is not in this manual. This manual is from 1707. The pictures were originally designed in 1606, and the titles were even before that, probably around the year 1600, maybe 1590s. So, they, you know, late Sengoku period. But it was the first, the only cut in this 1707 one is a single cut to the wrists. The follow-up cut is actually given in later manuals. As I said, we bought every Sengoku, sorry, every Yagyu manual to confirm this and looked at as many as we possibly could. So this is one of Nate's main mistakes. So what does Nate think it is? Okay, so I'm going to show you my version and Nate's version, but this is what Nate thinks it is. And I don't hate Nate's version, actually. It's quite nice. I don't hate it, to be honest, but it just isn't what the text says. Uh, it, it just isn't what is said in the text. But I don't I don't hate the version. Let's have a look. Videos that uh, Anthony has put out there on YouTube. And look, obviously, this is just meant to be in a polite discussion format, obviously. Uh, we're purely looking at the way uh, that Anthony is looking at the texts and bringing them out there and uh, claiming he's using them and his methodology. We're not uh, trying to critique him as a person or anything like that. This is purely an academic discussion. Now, obviously, you might be asking, okay, well, what's your interpretation of this then, Nate? What, how would you uh, interpret this technique as it's shown in Ito Ryodan, combining sort of, I suppose, ideas from both translations to create a, a valid interpretation? Well, this video is actually taken uh, from My Living History Group's Instagram page, uh, and feel free to have a look at it and see what you think. Now, if you want me to explain in detail exactly what's going on here and why I interpreted it this way, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, if enough people Now, one of the crafty things Nate did, which I didn't like him doing this, was he ignored the, the video of me flying to Spain and putting this out with two martial artists together in what I can consider as close as the uh, uh, version as possible. He ignored that one, which was my official version, and got the one of me just after work doing it in the building that I'm renovating and basically with the iPad on a slant there saying, well, Anthony's which is a bit like, no, take the proper one, Nate, if you're going to do it. But I still quite agree with my version, but I'll show you the two here. <laughs> Now, that is my official version that I flew to Spain, had the translator check, we filmed all it all, and basically was like, yep, we're happy, that is Ito Ryodan. There we go, it's done, that's exactly it in the text, which I am going to read the English text to you in a minute. So stay with it, stay with it. But let's have a look what I actually did. Let's have did. a look at this. In the last video, which is Samurai Combatives 2, we did Ito Ryodan. Now watch, lean forward and hit. But the key here is it's two forward steps. It looks like you go backwards, but you don't. Step forward lean forward, hit forward. It's only the sword that goes back and I'm finding a lot of people are putting their feet the wrong way. So, look, move forward, lean forward, hit forward. Okay, you see what's going on? So that was me doing a follow-up version of that, Ito Ryodan, just after I'd finished work. Because uh, you guys know, I'm uh, you follow me, I am renovating my my barn and my in-laws barn together so we, that's literally going to be our cinema room. So, uh, but I had to do it. But he didn't pick the correct one that I'd, everybody knew we'd uploaded and he only focused the one where I changed the steps so I like there's a step which is called basically the flying step or the Toby step um, where you flip switch your step very quickly which is also Yaguru so he says Anthony does the it's exactly the same step you move one foot forward and one foot back but instead of one down you go flip and he, and he said 
oh, Anthony got this wrong. It's actually a Yagyu step. And Yagyu Shinkagiru actually say you can interchange all these moves so that you can be a good swordsman. So I have not done anything incorrect there, according to Yagyu philosophy. And actually, that's what it says do. Make sure. And, and, and let's be honest, Ito Ryodan is quite a fast move. So if you're going to mix any of the steps, that one. But he only picked, out of all the videos, he ignored all the ones done in Spain, picked only the one where I double swap like that, and don't show where I show it normal like this. And he ignored that. So it's a very unfair critique. So let's start going through. But he doesn't think. Nate doesn't think that we do this step. He doesn't think you step forward and put your thingy forward. There's a lot of stuff Nate's saying there. That And one thing I really, really disagree with with Nate. And, and a lot of people this. Is they've got a very modern concept of swordsmanship. Modern in the sense of Koryu modern. It's just changed almost. You've got to get off the centre line. No you don't. Loads of swords girls like. Ma die ma you know what I mean? Get th just cut through them. And the other one is that you've got to be safe. It really aggravates me this in swordsmanship. Oh, but you're in the danger zone. Of course, you're the bloody danger zone. It's a feint. So the idea of this is you. If I if I stepped back and into this stance. I'd be too far away from the point of the entire point of this thing is to step forward, but you give the illusion of your sword is behind you away and you sort of changing the illusion of distance when you're like this. Yeah. And you push it in and then you're close enough to just hit with your Mononuchi their hand, which is called Metsuke to hit where you look and you look at the hands. It means Metsuke. It's striking the looking point basically. And that is a code word, uh, a buzzword, a terminology, uh, a lingo for Yagushin Kagiru, the hand, because you are there are various places you look, but the ninety percent of it is the hands. So when it says Metsuke, it means cut the hands. Right, basically for people like Nate and other people, this is your crux point. This is the text in Japanese, in the original Japanese. Please tell me where it is wrong. Like, I don't not mean to sound narky, but I get this a lot. And I did this with ninjutsu. And I'd spent 10 years showing people the translations. And then eventually they went, oh, okay, then. Ant's translators are correct. So here we go, Nate. Let's have a look. The Uchitachi, that's the other person, the person who strikes, is in Cho Chuno Seigan. Yep, the middle Seigan stance. Basically just Chuda. So you, I, so now we switch person, bring your sword down like a wheel on the right side so yes we bring it down no problem step forward are you listening step forward with the left foot have your left knee slightly bent sorry that should say bent is a spelling error there your body should be side on move your sword gently and evenly forward now be careful guys this doesn't mean move the point forward it means move the hands forward in the lean this is the lean, okay? Focus on Metsuke, where, you, where you're going to hit. And then the moment you are lowering your waist. So this is still describing, I've put the sword back. I've lowered my waist and I've pulled, it's actually the hilt of my sword forward into position. So let's have a look at that. Move backwards, lower the waist, pull the sword in. Then I'm going to cut. So let's try it again. Watch. I step forward with the left foot, lean forwards, sword in, cut. Okay, watch it again. You'll see the sword move. It's very slight, but step in with the left foot, lean forward, move the sword. There you go, cut. Now, this is where it gets the complicated bit, guys. So the skill ends at the top there, and the explanation is just underneath it. In Japanese, or well, in English, guys, you would think, oh, this just carries on. Bring your fist down. Make sure to stretch the left boulder out. They are an explanation of the above. Now, don't take my word for it, guys. This has been checked by multiple native-level Japanese speakers who have checked this, and they are trained in swordsmanship. And Miyako has a second dan, because they do dans now, in Yagyu Shinkagiryu. And a Yagyu Shinkagiryu graded Japanese speaker who is trained in social has said this is where the cutoff is and the next bit explains the bit above it is not the next step so as you can see we finish off the skill with uh, the uchitachi cuts to my left shoulder that's why it's there it's a feint and i stop him by cutting to metsuke let's remember what that means so remember here we are so basically uh, he's in chuno seigan the other guy i spin round 
and then I come and lean forward, bring the sword forward, cut the minute he goes. So it says the minute he goes to raise his sword, and I'll explain this in a second, go to cut him there. That's the cut. So the explanation is this, bring your fist down towards your kneecaps, which is what you're doing when the wheel is behind you. Make sure to stretch your left elbow and cut. Then at the moment the, uh, uh, intent, the moment the opponent intends to lift up his sword, step with the right foot, open up your waist and step through. Cut the left wrist of the Uchi Tachi. Now this is where English readers might get a bit confused because it's not got the connecting parts in. In Japanese it's a different language guys and it has different connecting parts. So if you were to read this in English it would be. So to explain how to do this, bring your fist down towards your kneecaps and make sure to st stretch your elbow when you cut. When you're going to cut, at the wait for the moment the opponent intends to lift up his sword. Then when he's lifted up his sword, step with the right foot. Open your waist up fully, step in and cut his left wrist. That's how it would be translated to understand it. But I'd be adding my extra words in there. But I promise you, Japanese readers have said this is the explanation of the above skill. It's not a second cut. The second cut comes later. This in other texts. Okay, guys? So it comes later in other texts. So basically, guys, uh, Nate has said he doesn't, there is no step forward. He said there isn't a step forward. But let's go back to William Scott Wilson and Hiroaki. I think Hiroaki's, I've not used his name for years. So basically, Hiroaki's text, Nate, I promise you, a piece of advice from me, throw that book away. It is not a translation. It is not a translation. It is a, a description. He has basically amalgamated multiple texts. He's watched the, uh, the Yagyu people do their stuff and he's formulated something that makes a bit of sense to him. It's actually nothing like the translation. I have had top Japanese people on this read his translation and read the original and go, nope, that is, even though he's Japanese, he has just done something and it's been translated into different languages and it's gone around the Yagyu and it's, everybody misunderstands, Nate. It's not... A translation it's an interpretation an explanation a description an enjoyment an amalgamation so then you've got the william scott wilson now the william scott wilson one i've had checked and people say it's very very good it's actually quite good but he's just missed the sort of like where the cutoff points are this explains that and that's that so you get the full text there's nothing wrong like if i put you the text we have done you could interpret oh then you you you've cut then you pull the sword to your kneecap and then you do, no, no, you need a, a native Japanese speaker to say, actually, Anthony, that goes there. And that, that's an explanation of that sentence. If you just follow it exactly like William Scott Wilson did, you end up with a, a, a weird thing. So I'm going to go show you now, if I can. We're going to the cinema to watch Dune Part 2. And the missus is going to try and film me before we go. But we've got not so much time. So hold on. Right, guys, so... What it actually says, you'll have to excuse me, I'll have to write it down because uh, I can't remember everything in the text but, uh, and we've got to go to cinema pretty quick. So basically, the enemy's over there and what I do is I see, the, the, the text says, step with the left foot, yeah, bring sword back, then it's basically you go side on, then you move the sword forward and then you... Um, then the person's gonna to cut to my, and lower my waist, the person's gonna to cut to my shoulder, I step with the right foot, and I cut. Now it says, it says in the text, but it isn't in Japanese, in English it would say, to do this, what you do is you bring the fist to the kneecap, stretch the left arm, step with the right foot, and cut to the enemy's left wrist, okay? But what's happened is with William Scott Wilson and Nate and people like that, what they've tried to do is they've tried to combine all that and one of they've missed the Japanese element of that's actually an explanation. So let me show you what it would look like if you actually just did the text. And I'm going to have to read this because it's a bit... So basically, if we just did the text as it was without understanding that one bit explains another bit, it would be sword back, um, step with the left foot, sword back, bend down, stand knee, and then cut to the enemy's wrist. And then it would be, 
put your fist to your kneecap, straighten your left elbow, step with the right foot, open the waist and cut. It just wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. So it would be like, I've cut, stretch to the knee pad, uh, knee thingy, stretch the left elbow, step right, cut. It doesn't make any sense. So to run through the text, what it actually says is, you push your, you step forward with the left foot and you wheel back into, this is called Shano Kamai, like this. You then, because your sword is back here, you lower your hips, expose this, pull this to your kneecap and stretch your left elbow. Then when you see him raise his sword, just as he's raising it in, you start your cut and you come through in a wheel shat no kamai, yeah, in the wheel cut and cut him in. Now in the other one, which is the only one Nate picked, is I used the toe big difference. So Nate's main issue is the fact that I've changed this to this, okay, which I think is probably closer to how they would actually do it. So that, guys, is the big, it just doesn't work. Okay, everyone, there you go. That's me explaining why. So let's round up. Basically, there is a text from 1707, which is an explanation of a 1606 or thereabouts image and title. And somebody who's part of the tradition, a hundred years after it was done, has said, hey, this is how you do it. And he was called Matsudaira. And that text has been available for years and it's been translated multiple times. Hiroaki-san has done it a terrible job. Let's just be honest, it's terrible. Nate, get any Japanese speaker to read it and you'll see what I'm talking about, I promise you. Then the William Scott Wilson one is good, but there's no real understanding of how the skill works. It's just, here's a list of things and there's no division of saying, well, actually, you know, you've got to do this and this has got to do this. So I went and had multiple Japanese people look at this, this skill and say, hey, Anthony, this is how it's actually done, and this means that. So, for example, open the hips up, if I remember from memory, is actually like, I think it's like the arrow quiver moves in a certain way, or something like that. It's not as easy as you think, Nate. And you've got to go through all this. And then you've got to compare this to the other 27 kata, and use the same terms that from them. So, Nate, no, I am not using somebody else's translation. I am using the translation from my team. The translation from my team, I hope, is better than everyone else's because we've spent a lot of time and a lot of money pulling all the scrolls together and going through them all and getting it checked by multiple people, native speakers, the lot. And then I've shown it to you guys in English so that if there's any Japanese speakers out there, you can say, oh, I see what you're doing. I do. Now, what I'm hoping is any Japanese speakers out there will say, actually, Anthony, that is pretty difficult text because it's, sometimes it's difficult text and it uses terminology. Remember, it's medieval text. So it uses sometimes difficult terminology. So, guys, I'm going to link Nate's video below. If you let me know what you think below, go to Nate's video. I don't actually hate Nate's technique. The one thing I dislike is that Nate did the same. For, remember the fight I had? The um, I I offered Cody, you know, spar and a laugh and a cake afterwards and all that. And only one person came forward and accepted, just one. Uh, the rest have said they will, but nobody's ever actually done it. And uh, we went and it was good fun and a good laugh. And Nate never came on and said, you know what, Anthony, actually... I'm sorry for what I said, that was all right. And Nate's done the same thing here. He's obviously polite, but he obviously hates what I do. He obviously doesn't like me as a person and he obviously doesn't really think it, but the, he doesn't really support what we do. But what I want to say here, guys, is I hope you guys do. And I hope this real, you realise that all these people out there say that they did it for ninjutsu. They were like, oh, this, you know, ninjutsu, this, this. And then I sent 10 years, there's the translation. And then they were like, oh, okay, then we just hate Anthony Cummings. Then. So we'll do the same. Now, Ito Ryodan is possibly one of the most difficult ones to do because it's one of the techniques that gives you an explanation afterwards. Not all of them do that. Some of them do. My, before I made this video, I sent it back to my Japanese translators and they said, no, Anthony, you're perfectly fine, this is correct. And I'm going to have this video checked by them first as well. So just to make sure I'm not too much wrong, I've had to do a lot of myself, like divide the original text. It won't be in the right place, but you get the idea. And um, I hope you've enjoyed that. So, Nate, I hope this squashes this dislike you have of what we do. And my main 
idea here, guys, or my, what I want to make absolutely clear is I have said this from the beginning. I am not 100% correct. You can find issues in the translation because the simple fact is, is the secrets have been lost. And e but while I say we're probably 85, 90% correct, we're more correct than anyone else. Why? Because we're the only people looking at this text in its original form and trying to piece it back together. No one else has done it. William Scott Wilson translated a text. No one out there, to my knowledge, has got the text, translated it, brought it back out. Just me and my translators. So instead of going against it, guys, so Nate, please reply to this video with your, with Japanese, where the Japanese is wrong and how we have interpreted the original Japanese wrong. And please show it on screen and say, Anthony, you've misunderstood this and your trans, your native level translators have, have missed this and I have got it right. So please, Nate, can you do that? Or say, actually, Anthony, I think I've messed up there. Yep, that's right. Or I don't know enough Japanese to be able to comment on that. Try there, Nate. Let's start there. For the rest of you, enjoy your day. I'm off to watch June 2. Buy a book. Support me so I can take the missus to more cinemas.